Welcome to Your Business, Your Life with Matt DeFrancesco, your personal financial technician. Whether you've had years of success in your business or just starting out, Hylip Financial can help you create a vision for your business, life, and family, and align these for generational wealth. As they say, what happens in your life affects your business. And now, on to the show. Well, hello, and welcome to Your Business, Your Life with me, Matt DeFrancesco. And, you know, a lot of the work that I'm doing with business owners or with the shop owners, right, especially now, is helping them to build value in their business. So eventually when they can have the type of transition that they want to have. And it was interesting because one of those areas is marketing. And I think, you know, it's interesting. I was reading the body shop business, the 2023 industry profile, and I was shocked that only over 50% of shop owners spend less than $5,000 a year in marketing. And yes, we all know that word of mouth is the best form of advertising, but there's a lot of opportunities that they're missing out there. So I decided to bring the queen of collision marketing on once again, <laughs> my buddy, Mickey Wood. So Yay! And before we get started, I got to suit up here. There. <laughs> All right. So, there you, you go, know, Matt. Now, now we're ready to go, baby. So now we're ready to go. So for those of you that don't know Mickey, Mickey is she's a marketing and growth strategy specialist, specifically working in the collision industry. She's a former shop owner, so she knows the challenges that business owners and shop owners face. And so she can really help get them to really accelerate their business. And I know she's been crazy busy especially with a lot of her own marketing that she's been doing. She's also one of the co-hosts of the Collision Cocktail Hour that we run every month. We're getting about 35 to 60 uh, shop owners on per month to be able to uh, just talk about different ideas and how can they grow and expand and bring value to their business. She's also the uh, host of the uh, Body Banging Podcast, of course. So I had to pull this out for you, Mickey. I, just, you know, I, just, I love it. You know, so anyway, she's also a writer and contributor to Body Shop Business. So Mickey, let's just jump into this. You know, uh, Welcome yeah. to your business, your life once again. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited to be on again with you, Matt. I love the energy that you bring and, and not only to the, what we do within the collision cocktail hour and just on our own interactions, but the energy that you bring to your clients too. And I think, you know, uh, you. it's something that's really needed. So like I said, you know, in the intro, I really wanted to kind of talk about the, some of the findings in the industry profile from body shop business. And, yeah. you know, it is interesting. Over 50% of shop owners spend less than $5,000 a year on marketing. So yeah. why do you think this is? Well, and the interesting thing I would love to know would be, what is that $5,000? What are you spending on? What are they considering marketing? That would be interesting too. And the reason is truthfully is they don't see the value in it. Shop mm -hmm. owners still don't really understand the power of marketing because the shops that do the business owners that do, especially shop owners that have owned other businesses. So they're actually like business people. Right. They have no hesitation doing marketing. None. They're a slam dunk. We talk, we know what they want and we move forward. It's like no hesitation. They get it. It's the shop owners that have never done it before. They're unsure or they've been burnt in the past. Right. So they're afraid to get burned again. And at the end of the day, it really comes down to, do you understand the value of marketing and what it can really truly do for you when it's done correctly that people don't know. And they're afraid to try because they're in typically a lack mindset of got to pay the bills, handle what's in yep. front of me, you know, the yeah. hamster on the wheel not really realizing it's not an expense, it's an investment. And the goal is to get a return on that investment. And that's what we're able to do for clients, but it's yeah, getting them out of that fear space. I get that. And you know, it's interesting. I remember during COVID and talking to a lot of owners and one of the first things they cut was marketing. And I would be like, what? Yeah. I said, this is when right. you want to be investing in yes. marketing because, you know, again, you know, that's probably the last thing you should cut. Mm -hmm. So how do you provide that education or how can shop owners get that education on the value of other forms of marketing? I mean, we all know, you know, 83% of shop owners are using word of mouth. Word of mouth mm -hmm. is always the, always the best of form course. of advertising, yeah. but it's not the only one. And you're limited by the number, the, only the number of customers that you actually have when you use word of mouth. So first off, how do they True. get educated on the value of marketing? Yeah. 
And part of that is the word of mouth thing. Oftentimes, the, even the person that got into the accident forgot where they went last time. What was the name of that place? Let alone go and tell other people. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> and that's, that's assuming you're having an extraordinary providing extraordinary service to your guests. So I would say to your question, how do they start understanding the value of marketing? It really is a mindset shift. So just listening to this podcast alone, starting to get exposed to other things and other people where it's not so scary. The other part is to try it. You really aren't going to understand the value truly for your shop if you don't try it. And there are marketers out there where if you're going to, it's just like a body shop, no different than a body shop. If you're shopping around for price and trying to find the cheapest place, right. chances are the quality of the results you're going to get are going to be not so wonderful, right? And we deal with that every day in shops. We're annoyed because people are shopping these estimates and it's like, well, we laugh at it, but yet business owners turn around and they do it <laughs> themselves right. in right. marketing. And in other areas. So it's kind of like, it's not, you know, not necessarily you pay for what you get, but there is understanding that if you're paying very little to do a little bit of marketing, you know, that $5,000 in a year you're spending, mm -hmm. did you, you really get anything from it? That's probably why they're not continuing it. Cause they're like, eh, I threw a magazine out, magazine ad out in some local magazine. It was thousands of dollars, but I didn't get anything. So marketing doesn't work. It's right. Like, no, actually, you really need to talk with somebody that understands the industry that can advise you on the best way to spend your money. If you're just blindly throwing money at marketing things, well, then the return isn't going to be as great rather than having like a laser like approach where you work with somebody in the industry that knows what works and what doesn't work in your market for your specific shop. So I hope that answered the question. I did a lot of, I do a lot of talking as Matt knows. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. And no, I think it does. And you know, it's interesting because you mentioned about, and we run, I run into this in my industry, like a lot of my peers, you know, they'll start, oh, I got to get into social media and I got to you know, do podcasts and I got to do this and that. Mm -hmm. And they don't see an immediate return and immediately they stop. And, yes, right. you know, and one of the things that I've always mentioned to them is you've got to understand that some of this is brand building. Some of it's yeah. creating awareness, some of it's mm -hmm. education and the ROI may not come out initially in the very beginning, but mm -hmm. down the road. And I can't tell you how many people have come to me and said, Oh, you know, we've heard the podcast or somebody, you know, they read an article on body shop business and, and what do they do? They don't call me initially. Let me check out this guy. And they check out my website. They look right. at social media posts. Oh, he's got a podcast. Let me listen to it. Let me get and so really what I'm doing is kind of building rapport with them. Yes. So, I mean, how can a shop owner utilize these different medias to help to build that rapport with their uh, future customers? Yeah, you're exactly right. It really is a web. And the more pieces that you put together on that web, the stronger it is and the faster it elevates you in the guest, the customer's mind. Right. So it's how can you be a lot of different places? But honestly, as a former shop owner and working with shops literally all day, every day, I typically take the walk into the pool approach rather than cannonball into the deep end. Okay. Okay. <laughs> typically for financial reasons. I mean, we have a certain cash flow, especially for shops that are a little nervous about doing something. Like we can start where we're going to get you the biggest bang for your buck. Let's right. start there. Rather than we have, you know, a lot of shops call me or we talk on collision cocktail hour. I'm just talking at events with shops and they're like, well, Mickey, I don't do marketing, but I'm going to start doing social media. And I'm like, that is not where you're going to see the biggest return on investment out of the gate. If that's something you want to work on long-term, that's a completely different strategy. But if you're looking to get cars in your drive mm -hmm. today, if you're looking to get your phone to ring tomorrow, that ain't it. So <laughs> there's- right. There's different approaches and there's times to launch those different things. And then how much money and how much, because time is money and mm -hmm. shops are limited and the, the employees that they have to be able to deploy some of these strategies, or are they going to hire from the outside? So there's a lot of pieces that go into it, uh, specifically for shops, the lowest hanging fruit. I'll give everybody a free tip. That's what is, I was going to ask. <laughs> 
is to go to Google and claim your Google business profile. It used to be called your Google My Business listing. They've changed right. it to now be your GBP, your Google business profile. It's free. You may already have one there, whether you knew it or not. Mm -hmm. Go and claim it if it's there. And if you don't have one, you need to have it. That's how Google knows that you exist. It's free. You don't need to hire anybody to do it. And it allows you to put your business name, your phone number, your hours, your website, if you have one, put pictures of your business. So mm -hmm. this is like your Google calling card. And I, our team, I will not work with people if they do not have a Google business profile. That is the foundational building block of your business digitally. Mm. End of story. And it's free to claim and build out. So I would say start there. Okay. And I think that's great. I think, you know, it's especially with it being free. And again, <laughs> right. you know, I'm sure collision shops are the same way. You get into a fender bender. You know, sometimes, of course, yeah, you, you file a claim with the insurance company. They're going to direct you to their preferred shops. But, you know, there's people like me who like, you know, I want to see what my options are out there and uh, start to Google. And uh, yes. I want to talk a little bit about Google reviews, too, like the importance. Good, good, good. So, yes. Yeah. Explain that this because, again, that's going to tie in with their, right. their Google business page. Yes, Exactly. And that would be the next step. I just actually had a phone call earlier this morning with a gentleman just opened up a shop two months ago, wants to do marketing yet. He has zero digital presence, no website, no nothing. He's I Googled him. Nothing even shows up. So it's like, he's a ghost doesn't oh, wow. exist, but he wants to drive traffic to his business. It ain't going to happen. Create right. the Google. So I told him what I'm going to tell everybody right now, create that Google business profile and then start getting reviews. Reviews are huge. Oftentimes shop owners, when I talk with them, think, well, I already have DRPs. What do I need to do Google ads? Because we do a lot of Google ads for shops. It's one of those things that gets a really good return on investment. So it's really popular, but people will bucket because the thought process, I'm already a DRP. They're going to send it to me anyway, or I'm not a DRP. So-and-so down the street is. And so anybody with insurance is just going to go where the DRP or right. the insurance company drives them. That's not accurate. We mm -hmm. do Google ads all across the U S for body shops, you would be shocked how many people go to Google looking for collision repair. It's oh, yeah. insane. And what is one of those things that they're going to look at when trying to decide, well, with Google ads, we can pop you right up to the top, but the key also in conjunction with that is reviews. You can tell people how great you are all day long. Right. They want to see what other people have to say about your business. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> and they're going to compare, right? Just like if you were to go hire a plumber or mm -hmm. an electrician or whatever, they're going to go, I'm going to look and see who's in the area and I'm going to compare reviews. Okay. This guy has 50 reviews, but they're all three years old. Well, this guy has, you know, 20 reviews, but they're all current. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now that's something totally different. So it's not even just the number of reviews. It's the current reviews. And obviously positive is better. <laughs> well, of course. Of course. Yes, yeah. Yes. And, and it's interesting because, you know, even shopping on Amazon, a lot of times if I'm looking for a product and, and I look at the reviews and the ratings, and, and that's exactly what I look at. I look at the number first. Because yep. if there's only, you know, they could have five stars, but if there's only three reviews, all right, what's yeah. the credibility that's there? But also yes, yeah. how recent are they? Right. And I think that's a really important thing, you know, no matter what you're shopping for. A hundred percent. Yeah. Recency is huge. And I would say, and so people will say it's hard for me to grow reviews and it is because right. people forget it's out of sight, out of mind. When you're a smaller business, mm -hmm. there are shops that will bonus their estimators or their CSRs. If somebody leaves a review or if somebody leaves a Google review, they don't market it like this, but they'll send them like a $10 Starbucks card. Actually my dentist. I just switched dentists. Uh -huh. And they actually said, if you go leave us a Google review, we'll send you a $15 Starbucks card. And I was like, oh, that's cool. So it's, you know, whatever you need to do if you're small. And then there are other software systems out there to help you grow your online reviews. We actually use one that our team has. There's other companies out there that helps you grow those via email with past customers that have left. Some companies use text. I prefer email personally. Uh, but there is that software. If you're a larger shop and you've got the capacity to be able to 
spend the money for that software, that can be a great way to grow those reviews also. Right. So you could basically, I mean, you can customize a solution based off a smaller shop, larger shop, and right. how they can basically, you know, most effectively utilize the dollars that they want to spend. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Is, is, is right. there a rule of thumb of like how much money you can, yeah. I, I, and again, I don't know when, the, I know at one point I was at a seminar one time and they said you should be spending anywhere from seven to 14% of your revenue, top line revenue mm -hmm. on advertising and marketing. Is that, do you think those numbers are accurate? Yeah. The, so typically they'll say seven to 10%. It can go up to as high as 15% for marketing and that's all industries. Right. What we see in the collision industry is a one to 3%. Okay. So think about how different we are in collision versus other industries. Now, why do other industries really understand the power of marketing so much more than collision? Well, <laughs> I think because it's so new yeah. marketing in the collision world, we, I don't need, what do I need marketing for? I I'm busy enough as it is. Right, and, right. but now we've got consolidators coming in. Shops are really fighting to stay open in a way that they've not had to before. So it's a different landscape that we're living in. So uh, the one to 3% is more what we see on average for a shop, but ideally, yes, we're up in that seven to 10%. And most, most, I would say 95, 99% of shops are, if they're doing marketing, it's the one to three. All right. Okay. So, you know, and you brought up a great point, which is something I wanted to get to, and this this idea of consolidation. So when we were at uh, SEMA and CIC, our friend, Laura and I, Laura Gay, yes. and I were on a panel and it was a consolidation panel. And I was the only yes. non m and person that was on this panel. <laughs> so the last question that Frank Turlip asked was, do you see the industry becoming just big box stores? Is it going to be like in the hardware industry, Lowe's and Home Depot? Mm -hmm. And it was funny. I just happened to have the mic at the time. And I just said immediately over my dead body. Yeah, <laughs> and, then I kind of, and, then, and then I kind of highlighted it. I said, I think what that we're seeing more and more consolidators are coming in, but I think there's a place for the independent shop. And I always use the example yes. of the hardware store. I have a local hardware store down the road from me and I will go there 99% of the time unless they just don't have something that I have to get at one of the big box stores. But right. for the most part, I go there. Why? I can get personalized service. I can say, mm -hmm. I can go in to say, look, I have a mowing sink. It's leaking. It's this model. And I, what do what I need to do to fix it? And they will literally walk me through. There was a time when I had my sewer lines done, they finished, but there was either crawl space. And so the pipe was coming out of the crawl space. There's a big open, just open hole that was there. And yeah. I was afraid of critters coming in. So yes. I went down to the hardware store and I was telling the guy this and he and I literally went back into the shop and like designed this wire meshing with clamps and stuff to be able to cover the thing. And I thought, wow. this is cool. This guy's like working with me to solve this. Yeah. Problem. So right. I think that's where the independent shop can differentiate yourself. So that's what I wanted to ask you yeah. about is what are some things from a marketing standpoint mm -hmm. that shops can do the independent shop that wants to stay independent and wants to yeah. kind of like, you know, because maybe they want to create, mm -hmm. a, keep a family legacy. Maybe they're an asset to their community. Maybe they're loyal to their employees. What right. are the things that they can do? Yeah. And you're exactly right. There is definitely a need, not a desire for the independence. There's a need for it. People want it. The consumer wants it. There is a group of consumers that want the easy peasy box it up, pitch it. Let's go just right. roll me out. I don't care. There is that group. At the end of the day, I say it comes down to customer experience, to guest experience is a number one. And then that rolls into, like you're saying, employee experience, all the things that you get to do differently as an independent that the consolidators can't do. They don't have the bandwidth. That's not how they're set up. So typically when it comes to the marketing side of it, this is really where you get to utilize your website to differentiate yourself. Right. And I'm all about differentiation. I spoke at SEMA also in a whole segment on differentiation. What makes you different from the people or from the shops around you and push that out, share that. A lot of people assume body shops are all, all the same. They don't know what they don't know. So you've got to tell them. What yeah. makes you different? Share that on your website. Put that in your Google business profile, in right. your description, have a picture of whatever it is. 
really separate yourself. And then when you're doing marketing, advertising, whether we're doing Google ads for you, you are doing magazine ads, whatever it is, then we get to highlight those differences because everybody's going to say you give the best customer experience. Everybody says that. Oh yeah, we're the best. That's not a differentiator because everybody can say it, right? right? So what are you really doing differently? And a lot of people love the family owned and operated. Mm -hmm. And then the customer experience, because you're saying it's great means nothing. But when you have all these reviews saying, John came out to my vehicle, he sat with me, he showed me this, he went over that, he called me and updated me when I picked up my vehicle, they gave me a box of cookies and thanked me mm -hmm. for coming in. I mean, these are all the things that make the independent shop so beautiful. Right. We get to customize in the big box stores. There is no customization. Exactly. It's a process factory. That's what it's supposed to be. So take advantage of it in all areas and then use your marketing to push out the differences of what makes you different. Because if you're not telling the customer, they don't know. Right. They don't know. Is that something that you help shop owners to identify? Because this was something that was really revolutionary in my practice. When I first started working with my coach, he used to follow Jay Abrams all the time. And Jay Abrams mm. was a big proponent of your of preeminence. And preeminence is that whole idea of what makes you different, what makes you unique and special. Right. As I was trying to develop this in my own mind and I was working with my coach on it, you know, it came down to, you know, first that I know the industry. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I can help to customize solutions based off my knowledge of your business, specific knowledge of your business. You know, mm -hmm. the other thing was that I've been through a lot of these, you know, I've been grew up in a family business. I've worked with family businesses over the last 30 years and, and the last 18 in financial services. So I understand those nuances. So is that something right. that you kind of help shop owners to develop? Definitely. It's an option for shop owners that want to work on that. We can definitely work on building that out because oftentimes they don't know and they, or they want to create something. I want to create something that makes me different. I don't want to be like everybody else. So we do a free 30 minute consultation call and we can have a chat about that. I can for free, give you some ideas, some tips, some things. Typically I recommend you get with your team this may sound daunting. This is not for you to do alone. This is right. a team buy-in opportunity to really get everybody on board. And they're going to think of things that you'd never think of. I mean, the best ideas often come from the people around you. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a great opportunity. And then you use your marketing to leverage those, the things that you come up with in those meetings. Right. You know what Stephen Covey always says, you know, begin with the end in mind. And so you yes. got to know what that end is. What and right. I think having somebody that's outside the fire, you know, I always yes. use the illustration yeah. where, yeah, you know, in the, the revolutionary war, the generals were on a hilltop. And it wasn't mm -hmm. because they wanted to stay out of the fire. The reason was they needed to stay out of the fire so that they could see what was happening. Right. Because when the smoke and the guns and the cannons are going off and you're in the throes of battle, whether it's in your shop and trying to push as many cars through, you can't always see what makes you yes. different. And, and sometimes totally. even start to think this way. I think having that outside perspective is really important. A hundred percent. What's that saying? You can't see the forest through the trees. That's it. Right. right. Exactly. <laughs> like you need somebody on the outside to help you get a little different perspectives sometimes. And sometimes that's all you need is a little bit of a shift to start being aware of the things because we don't know what we don't know. And that's why podcasts like this are so great to listen to or mine or whoever's you listen to, right. because we don't know what we don't know. And we're used to doing things the way we've always done them. So it does help to have the outside person and just outside input in general is great. As long as right. you've got your filter on, because there's a lot of nonsense that comes through also. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's true. That's true. Yeah. And I think you have to have that filter and find reputable sources. And of I also course. think industry conferences, uh, mm -hmm. things like CIC are, are yes. really important because, you know, you start to get around at least this has been my experience the ones that go to those places are ones that are growth oriented 100%. and so you can yeah. start to even get some feedback from other shop owners and yes. what they're doing and 100%. i mean i've mm -hmm. learned a lot probably more about your business from talking to your clients than I have talking <laughs> to you. All right. <laughs> right. I think some of that's we're, we're, we're all, we're typical, we're humble people and we don't want to tune yes. our horns, but again, getting that outside perspective, I think is really, really important and really helpful.
Yeah, I agree. I yeah. agree. So, uh, Mickey, any other last thoughts that you might have as far as what shop owners can be doing? I mean, you know, again, it seems to me more, maybe it's just ignorance mm-hmm. you know, or it's stuck in paradigms. Like I, I had a shop mm-hmm. owner one time who decided to spend, you know, $1,500 on a billboard. And I was mm-hmm. kind of, I said, Ron, I said, why are you, <laughs> billboards are gauche anymore. I mean, there's much more <laughs> effective ways to be able to market. So how do we yeah. get, you know, I don't know if there's any final thoughts on what are some of these things that shop owners can do to get out of this mindset? Yeah, I would say I understand that oftentimes for shop owners, it's a cash flow issue. And I ran into that in my own business. And I always want to be mindful of that, of how much money do you actually have to be able to invest this? The big thing is a reminder that this isn't an expense. This is an investment that's going to come back to you. So for clients that work with us, let's say they're doing Google ads. Yeah. Well, they're going to spend, let's say $1,500 to Google and pay my management fee. And, you know, let's say they're spending about $3,000 a month. A lot of shops will be like 3000 a month. That's ridiculous. And I always say, let's think about how many vehicles we need to fix to have that make sense. If it's a spend of $3,000, you can fix two cars and in profit, you made that 3,000. If it's a big hit, you won and you're done, you know? Right. So everything above that is gravy. Now the shops that get it, that understand when you intelligently spend your money on marketing and do it in ways that are tried and true. So you get that return. Now you have confidence to now move forward and expand into other things, maybe like SEO, or maybe you do want to do social media, or you want to do some branding locally at a school. So we talk about what that would look like for you. But it's, I would say the shops out there, they're like, I want to do marketing. Don't start throwing things at the wall to see what sticks. It's even if you have the budget, it's a waste, can be a waste of money because you don't know what you don't know. Talk with somebody like me or somebody else in the industry that works with shops that sees where you're going to get that return, that sees where you're going to get that traction so that you get the most from the money that you spend. So when you're spending the money, although in the moment it's like, oh, I got to spend this money, you're seeing that return that's like, oh my gosh, that was well worth it. I'm thrilled. I'm so excited I did it. It's a no brainer. So It's shifting the mindset of, I don't want to spend that money. That money, if done properly, is going to come back to you fivefold, tenfold, who knows? Uh, But that's the key. That is the key is we've got to stop looking at it as an expense. And the shops and the businesses that understand that are spending the 5%, 15% (laughs) on marketing because they get it and they see the return. So it's worth it. That's exactly right. It's not an expense and it's an investment. And one thing I'm going to kind of throw this out there to the audience is that, you know, in helping shops to build the value of their shop, their business, it's interesting because it's not always about driving more revenue. It's about Mm. increased profitability. And a lot of times Mm. it's the non-financial areas like marketing that Mm. actually have the greatest impact on raising value. And you know, something is, this is why I love talking to you, Mickey, because all of a sudden these ideas pop in my head. (laughs) One of the big issues in the industry is these tech shortages. Mm. And I, you know, I'm thinking about this image that you can create out there for even potential employees, for potential mm-hmm. techs, for potential yeah. estimators, potential CSRs. All right. of this. I mean, I think that's another great benefit because it mm-hmm. can help you not only to attract great talent, but also to retain it because now if they see their shop out there all the time, yeah. there's a pride that's in that. A hundred percent. Yeah. You've got the brand awareness. You've got the pride. It is a buy-in thing, but there are ways There are shops call me every day. I'm on the phone literally every day with Mm. body shops and they want to grow their business. They want, especially right now, shops are slowing down and they're feeling panicked because here they are. They had three months scheduled out, you know, three months of whip. And now all of a sudden they're just eking by and where is everybody? So they're panicked. They're freaking out. They're not freaking out. They've noticed the slowdown. Right. And so don't wait to call me <laughs> or do marketing with somebody. You can wait, but I would say 
start doing it now. If you're noticing a slowdown, even if you're not, I do have shops right now that are in growth mode. They see the shops around them slowing down and they call me because they're not, and they don't want to slow down. So that's been a huge influx of clients for us as well. So it's, you don't have to wait for the phone to stop ringing to do marketing. There is a ramp up period. There's time it takes. It's kind of like a sprint. You don't just start sprinting. You get ready, you get prepared. There's a ramp up period. So no matter where you are, whether you are killing it or you're dying on the vine, it's never too late. The time to start is now really. And we can adjust it. We can adjust your marketing. We can adjust the spend. It's kind of a gas pedal effect. So you don't have to go all in. It doesn't have to be a massive spend. I can give you free ideas is that you can go implement on your own if you are just starting or if you're really struggling financially. There's ways to create that flow without having to do the 10%, <laughs> you right, know, the 10% exactly. spent to marketing. Yeah, exactly. And, and like you said, ease into it. And, you know, I think Mickey can also be able to guide you as to here's how you should start and you can mm-hmm. ramp up, but understand yep. something. And this is whether it's marketing or any type of business development activity, there's a 90 day lag always Mm. is It's in my industry and it's in the collision industry that you start doing something, but you're not going to see those results probably at the earliest for 90 days. So be patient with it. Don't expect some things we run Google ads and we start getting people results within the first month. Oh, that's so, great. That's awesome. Yeah, it's been, and that's one of the reasons why we recommend it for so many shops because they want to see results yesterday. So it's like, well, okay, course. what can Everybody we do does. for you to get your results immediately? The SEO, the social media, all of that kind of thing. Yes, there is lag time. And that's typically why those are down the road. That's as we get into the pool, as you're making the money from that Google ads, then we get into the things that take a little bit longer. So we try to get you the return real quickly. So then you start doing other things later to, build that web and build right. you up. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, Mickey, yeah. I love it. Always, it's always awesome talking to you. Yeah, I know. You, too. <laughs> you, you guys are a little ball fire here, but I tell you, <laughs> but honestly, and I can speak from experience, Mickey is the best in the industry. Oh, and, and, and I you, think Matthew. the fact that she knows the industry, she can speak the language and she kind of knows the trends that are out there uh, is really benefit. So I would recommend, we're going to put all of her contact information in the show notes. Um, you know, you. If, if anything resonated with you or you just want a little free consultation yeah. just to, you know, to get some feedback, see yeah, I do it all the time. She thinks, yeah, I'm sure she's more than happy to do that. And we're also happy to do that too. On our end, if there's yeah. anything, any of these topics or anything about building value in your business, looking to transition the business and just don't know how to go about it. Feel free mm-hmm. to go to my website highlightfinancial.com. You can click on let's chat. I give everybody 30 minutes of my time. So, but anyway, Mickey, it's been great having you on. Thank you. you. Th- thank you so much for being on again. I really thank appreciate you. It. Yeah. And, and one quick thing is there are a lot of shops, not a ton of shops, but there are shops that we work with that do marketing in order to then work with somebody like Matt to transition out because they want to grow the business to sell it. They want to grow the business to pass it off to their son or their daughter or whoever. That's very common for our shops to potentially then start talking with Matt about, I want to cash out or I want to leave this to my family. <laughs> right. That's yeah. exactly right. I'm actually putting together, I'm doing a bunch of presentations this year on building value. And it's, you know, one of the questions is, you know, how many shop owners are going to exit their business? Mm. And it's a hundred percent. I mean, at some eventually, point, yeah, <laughs> exactly. right. You know, we're going to die at some point. So I right. mean, that could be, so we always want to be preparing for those things. So anyway, idea. Um, yeah. thank you very much. I yeah. appreciate yes, that. Yes. Last thanks goes to you, the audience. Thank you for being on Your Business, Your Life with me, Matt DeFrancesco. And if you've not subscribed to the podcast, please click the subscribe button below. That way, when a new episode comes, it'll drop right onto your device. And also, no matter how you're watching or listening to this, whether it's through iTunes, Spotify, iHeart, YouTube, however you're listening to it, give us a five-star review if you like uh, the great guests that we're having on, like Mickey. And that way, we can get her out and all the other great guests to more people. So with that, again, Mickey, thank you so much for being on again. And thank you, the audience. So uh, let's make it a great day and take care and God bless. God bless. Bye. (laughs) Hey, I really want to thank you for listening to the Your Business, Your Life podcast. If you want to be notified when new episodes become available, click the subscribe button below. 
The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of High Lift Financial. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investment, legal, or tax advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified professional with any questions you may have regarding your business or personal planning. DeFrancesco Financial Concierge LLC DBA High Lift Financial is a registered investment advisor. Registration with the United States Securities and Exchange Commission or any state security authority does not imply a certain level of skill or training.